In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of define property plant and equipment and how to account for them. So if we see an essay question like this, of course, the best place to start is the definition. What are we talking about when we're talking about property, plant and equipment? We're typically talking about tangible type of assets, assets that we can physically touch, physically move and feel, assets that have a useful life, typically more than one year or accounting period, and therefore assets that we will be allocating or depreciating or allocating the cost of those property, plant and equipment uh, to the income statement over the useful life. Couple issues when we determine property, plants, and equipment. What are we going to do with it? How are we going to record property, plants, and equipment? One is that when we purchase it, we need to determine should we record it as property, plants, and equipment. And again, if it's if it's tangible assets, that's something that we're going to use more than one uh, time period, or we're going to use it multiple time periods into the future, multiple years into the future, then typically it's something that we would need to capitalize as property, plants, and equipment. When we put it on the books, then we have the problem of how do we record it. And we would typically record it using the cost principle at cost, what we paid for it. Now, that doesn't mean that we had to pay cash for it. Uh, if we took a loan out, then we would still put it on the books for uh, the loan amount, whatever the sticker price was, because we bought it, in essence, by financing it in that case. So we'll put it on the books at the cost. Then we have the, the next problem, which is that we put it on the books as an asset. We debit the asset, credit the um, cash that we paid or any kind of liability that we paid for it. Now, it's not going to stay on the books for an asset forever because we know that this uh, type of, of asset will depreciate over time. It'll go down in value, either through deterioration or just um, you know normal, normal deterioration maintenance or stuff like that, that it will decline in value. And therefore, what we want to do is allocate the cost over its useful life not the market value. We're not trying to get it to the market value per se. Um, what we're trying to do is allocate the cost over its useful life, which may mirror in some ways <laughs> the market value of the equipment as it goes down. But it's a, it's a key distinction here that we're using a cost principle and recording the cost, allocating it over the useful life, not trying to record necessarily the fair market value as uh, the equipment. So the way we're going to do that will be through depreciation. A couple different methods we can use. A straight line method is kind of the standard default to explain depreciation. And then we have some variations on that, including uh, some accelerated methods like double declining balance or a units of uh, production method, which can also be used to calculate the depreciation. Now, the goal of these are going to be to allocate the expense for the cost over the useful life. We do that with the journal entry of debiting depreciation expense and crediting accumulated depreciation. And you'll note that within that, we don't have the term uh, property, plants, and equipment. We have depreciation and accumulated depreciation. We're going to make up another account, in other words, that will be uh, reducing the equipment. It's called a contra asset account. And that's going to be the accumulated depreciation. So therefore, to, to allocate the, the cost and then to calculate the book value, we would have to take the equipment minus the accumulated depreciation, and that would then give us the book value. So we're going to do that over the useful life, and at the end of the useful life, we will then have uh, the salvage value being the remaining value. Now, in order to calculate the straight line method or double declining method, we would typically need the cost of the equipment, what we believe the salvage value would be at the end of the useful life of the equipment, and the useful life of the equipment. Uh, those are going to be some factors needed in order to calculate the depreciation. Another component we need to calculate in depreciation is at the end of the useful life, or if we sell it, then we have to record the disposal, whatever that disposal may be in some way. And to do that, we've got to take off not only the equipment account off the books once we get rid of it, but also the accumulated depreciation related to it. So it's an asset type of account, so when we get rid of it, we'd have to debit the we'd have to credit the asset the equipment asset <laughs> to make it go down we'd have to debit the related accumulated depreciation to make it go down and then uh, the, the difference there if there is any difference would possibly go to a gain or a loss now if we had um, sold it for something then we'd have to say okay we got cash we debit cash we credit the equipment to make it go off 
we debit the accumulated depreciation to make it get off the books. And then any difference there to make the journal entry balance would be a gain or a loss on the sale of the equipment. So those are going to be our major components. When we deal with property, plant, and equipment, it goes on as an asset. we got to record the assets. And then we got to record the depreciation over its useful life. And then we have to record the either sale or disposal of the property, plant, and equipment at some point. 